Welcome back. Now, this video is part of a series where I'm just going over my first day or so using the chip computer, things I've come across, testing to see what it can do. You know, we'll get more in depth on stuff, but I just want to show you how it can perform out of the box. And uh, again, it's part of a series. I would definitely check out the playlist in the description to um, view the previous videos. But today we're going to test video playback. Now, there's lots of different compressions out there. I'm, I've downloaded one of my home videos from YouTube. Uh, to see how it plays. It's going to be an MP3 or MP4 format and I just figure people are going to want to stream or at least watch YouTube videos. Let's see how it performs. So to get networking, I don't want any network delays. I've actually downloaded two copies of the video. A 720p uh, video and uh, one that's a, the other one's a lower resolution of um, 640 by 360 somewhere around there in resolution. Let's see how they perform, and I do want to stress that this is just out of the box using mPlayer, which was already installed on this. I have the HDMI board and these little speakers hooked up. If you watched the last video, you understand this device cannot, as far as I know, do audio through the HDMI. Uh, that being said, also, um, something like a Raspberry Pi, I know that you can uh, set some boot configurations so that it uses some of the RAM as uh, you know you can partition stuff for more power to the GPU uh, and that's how you can get better performance for video playback on a Raspberry Pi. Haven't done anything like this to this, I don't know if it's possible right now out of the box configuration. There's also special compiles of video players for the Raspberry Pi to allow it to use some hardware acceleration. Again, this is just using default M player that was already installed on this, I'm assuming from the Debian repositories. So here we go with the 720p video. So not even full 1080p. I'm SSH'd in through my phone and that's how I'm starting the video. I got the music going and the video is playing. Now it might be hard to tell on the camera. It's not playing at full speed. The audio is playing fine. We're, what, 10 or 15 seconds in the video, the actual video, we're maybe five seconds into it. It's playing in, like, slow motion. Um, so, as of right now, it's not playing properly. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and kill that because it's just not working in the way it's supposed to, or the video's supposed to be playing. Here we go with the lower resolution video that's, again, 640 by 360, I think. It's playing properly, audio, video, and sync, but we have a big black border all the way around the video because it's playing at the resolution it is and it's not stretching it to fill the whole screen. So let's see what we can do about that uh, because mPlayer does have options to zoom and stretch the video, although I don't know how it's going to affect performance. So let's go ahead and play around with that a little bit and see what we can do. Okay, so I've SSH'd back into my uh, chip computer, and let's go ahead and uh, first thing I need to do is change my display. If I try to run any uh, GUI programs now, if I had X telling uh, in uh, X forwarding enabled, it would display it on this computer here, but we want to display it on the regular display there. So we're going to type in display equals colon 0.0, .0. and then I'm going to say export display. So those two commands will now, any GUI application I run, will display on the actual TV screen, not on the um, computer I'm on currently. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you, because I'm logged in through the network, if that wasn't clear. Okay, so at this point, I need to figure out what is the resolution that I'm actually playing at on my TV right now. So I'm going to say, on the chip computer, so I'm going to say XRander. I'm going to hit, go ahead and hit Enter. It's going to tell me all my different video options that I have, but uh, right now you can see that I am currently running uh, at this resolution here. So that's important because we're going to tell mPlayer to zoom in on our video. So I'm going to say mPlayer, and I'm going to say dash FS to tell it to go full screen, and I'm going to say zoom, and on X I want to zoom 1360, and on Y I want to zoom to uh, 768, and then the file that I want to play. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and we'll see how that plays out. So again, this is the lower resolution video that's 640 by 3 something. We've got rid of the black border, but now it's having the same problem 
that the uh, 720p video did, which is that it's playing slow. So now we're going to add a drop frame option to M Player, which isn't really great, but it should allow the video to play at least in sync with the audio, but it'll be, well, you'll see. As you can see back here in the console, it's even telling me your system is too slow to play this. Uh, so I'm going to hit Q to quit out of that. We're going to run the same command, so I hit up arrow once, and I'm going to add right here a option dash frame drop. That's all we have to do. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Well, now we've got the audio playing, the low resolution video playing full screen, and it's keeping in sync with the audio, but it is very, very jerky. Looks like three or four frames, maybe five frames a second, where it should be 30 frames a second. So, as of right now, I'm unable to play video full screen on this. The only other thing I can think of is to lower my display resolution down to uh, about what the video is and then play it back because it does play smoothly with the black border. Um, so if I decrease the resolution I'm dis my display is at, it should fill the screen and play smoothly. Um, so that's an option I'm going to play around with. But let me know what you think. Again, I've had this thing for a day and a half. I haven't really looked into it. I haven't looked up online how to play video on this thing. I'm just going by my own knowledge. Um, so let me know what you think. Have you been able to get it? Am I doing something wrong? Or is this video, or is this just how this device works? It's not a big deal. Again, at this point, um, I don't plan on using this as a media center, but some people might. Um, and there might be configurations and different compiles of software that uh, give you better performance. So that's it for today. Uh, I thank you for watching. As always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to that where you can search through videos from both my channels. Again, this is mainly a hardware channel. Right now, we're just looking at an overview of the chip computer, but in future videos, we're going to get a lot more into microcontrollers like Arduinos and a lot with the ESP8266 uh, module, which if you're not familiar with that is, we're going to have lots of fun with that. But since I just got this in, I'm very excited to play with it, so I figured I'd do this first series on this device. I thank you for watching. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to subscribe. Again, check out my page, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Link in the description where you can search through all my videos. Uh, there's also links there to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash millix1000. You can support both my channels there and get early access to all my videos from both my channels, as well as an RSS feed on filmsbychris.com so you can keep track of all my updates. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.